Very good evening to each and every one of you. We welcome you to the upper room, the place where the proceeding word is clear, the prophetic words coming clearly to us. We thank God that you are here. I want to uh, begin by asking you to give me a thumbs up if I'm clear to you today. Praise God. Thank you. It's good once again from everywhere, from different uh, nations, from different continents. We welcome you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for being with us here this, this evening. In the book of John chapter 1 and verse 14, the word of God says to us that the word became flesh and dwelt, tabernacled among us. And we saw the glory and the glory as only of the begotten son received the father full of grace and truth. The whole narration of John chapter 1 tells us the process by which the word must happen, the word must become flesh. It must dwell in us, it must change us, it must shift us. The man and the message must become one. When the man and the message becomes one, there is a model on the ground, there is life that's speaking to it, and this is what that will make the difference for. This is what that will make the difference wherever we go. I believe this series of message that we are listening to is very, very critical to us in the days that we are living right now, in the time that we are living, according to the prophetic word given to us in 2019 about the different sets of cows, the, the, the fat cow, the thin cow, the lean cow, the, you know, and uh, so on and so forth, gives us the prophetic timetable by which we are living in. God has already predestined predestined times and seasons, the Bible says, and we must live in the seasons. We must live prophetically and build apostolically. We must have this mind that to build for the future, not just for the present, not living every day. The Bible says, do not be conformed to this world. What does the world do? They live in the present continuously, but we live in the present according to the future that God has shown to us. We, if we, every time we come together for, for upper room, we can see that this word that was spoken to us was in 2010 or 12 or 14. All these words were in the past, but it's so relevant, still relevant for us today, you know, so fresh. And, and now we understand it as we begin to grow, but still it was spoken then for now and still it is spoken now for the future. I hope you catch what I'm trying to say, but it is so important, so vital for us to capture, capture the spirit behind the message, the nature behind the message, the prophetic element behind the message, all that is required, all that we need is the word. And as we process it, the whole process of John chapter one takes place. In the book of John chapter one, we can see the beginning. We begin with the word. In the beginning was the word. And we know that word was with God and the word is God. Hallelujah. He is in that word. And if you take that word and you allow that word to begin to adjust, align and bring all kinds of changes inside, internally and externally, in especially uh, our attitudes, our our responses, our pa paradigms, our preferences, you know, as it begins to kill the self, one of the major, major work of the word is to cut away human self and self-will. The kingdom cannot come if his will is not done, the Bible says. They ask Jesus how to pray. He said, thy kingdom come, thy will be, will be done. So we know we know that unless the will of God be done, the kingdom cannot come. And the will of God cannot be done because our will is standing in the way. But the word of God will enter our will and break it and shape it and make it and remake it again until the will is a landing place for the will of God. The will can house the will of God. There's no, uh, there's no continual struggle. There's no continual strife there. But once that place, our will is a house for the will of God, his kingdom will come to us and, his, and we can see his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Once earth and heaven is aligned in our heart, heaven and earth will join together and we will see the manifestation. So God bless you this evening. I pray that you and I will begin to receive this prophetic word and let the prophetic word give us the place 
uh, um, the, 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 give us the direction. Let our eyes begin to see what we cannot see as the whole process of the word continues in our life. God bless you. I pray that we hear what God is saying today, not what a man is saying, but tune your ears, ears to God and let him speak to us through the man of God. So bless you. I pass the time over to our father, Papa Jonathan. All right, let's deal with the subject on the vocational principles, sorry, operational principles for operating in our vocation or our field. Maybe let's look at one or two scriptures which will help us. In the book of Nehemiah, in chapter 13 and verse 10, Nehemiah chapter 13 verse 10 He said, I also discovered that the portions of the Levites had not been given them. So the Levites and the singers who performed the services had gone away each to his own field. Have we got it? Nehemiah chapter 13 verse 10 That the Levites, because they were not provided for in the house, they could no longer function in what we call ministry. So each one of them went to their own field and they started to operate in their own field. See, most of us, if we have one source of income shut down, we have no other field of operation. Yeah. Yeah. For that reason, the moment our funds and finances are shut in a certain area, we do not know because we do not have another field to operate in. We do not have extra resources coming in. All right. For most of us as pastors, this is a suicide mission. That's why a lot of pastors, they have to find other, other sources of income. Sometimes the pastor's wife begins to work and bring in the resources. So the pastor stays in ministry, his wife begins to work. Now all that is adjustable to each home. You cannot use it as a rule because each family has to survive and they find their best way of survival. Just because you have that way of survival is not the best way. It's the best way for you, but it's not the best way in Scripture. All right? It's not always the best way in Scripture. You just got to find the best way for you. But we got to teach. When I teach, I got to teach what is the best way in Scripture. All right? And so the, in the, the, the guy with the ministry, he was working in the temple, but because of Tobiah living in the inner chambers of the house, he lived in the chamber where all the tithe and offerings and all the, the wheat and the first grain offerings are brought in, out of which the Levites were fed. But because Tobiah was living in that room, they could not bring in the harvest. For that reason, the Levites could not be provided for with resources. So all the Levites went back to their own field and started to work in their farms. If anything happens to your primary source, do you have other fields to survive in? That's what vocation is all about. All right? That's what multi streams of income is all about. As we develop multi streams, we have, then we have passive income, then we have massive income, and then we can upgrade our lifestyle as we go up higher and higher. Amen. All that we have covered, I hope you can understand that so far. Is that understood? All right, let's just deal with some operational principles here in the area of our vocation, field, job. You know, some people jokingly said about job as just over broke. So I want you to write down some operational principles. Number one, know that you are placed there by God. Know that you are placed there by God. You've been placed there to represent Him. You've been sent there to advance the kingdom through the call of God on your life. All right? You've been placed there to represent Him. And you've been sent there to advance the kingdom of God through the call of God on your life. 
One of the habits of true millionaires is that they have found their vocation. They have found their occupation. They have found the place where they best operate in. If you're continually struggling to produce results, you're in the wrong place. A fruit doesn't struggle to bear fruits. If you're a pastor and you're struggling and struggling and struggling, not basically because you don't want to, but you just don't have things connecting in you, it's because the tree is not formed. But the day the tree is properly formed and the roots are connected, the fruits are just results. Wealth is results. Money is results. Health is results. And by the way, as I mentioned to you, weight is results. You can't just say, I don't know how, I, 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 I'm so heavy. You don't have to be a rocket scientist. All right, because whatever you put in stays. All right, so please do remember, we must be placed there by God. And this is one of the things you and I need to know. If God has called you into ministry, and that's your first primary vocation, stay there. From there, develop other fields. Amen. From there, develop other fields. If God raised you up to be a teacher, and this, if this is your vocation, and that is your primary vocation in which you have to stay there to fulfill your call, stay there. Because that vocation will meet your needs. All of us are called. All of us have different vocation. Unlike the religious traditional thought pattern that some are called, few are chosen, rest are frozen. <laughs> All right, so I hope you're not part of the chosen frozen. It's important for us. All right, religious mindsets or religious teachings have confined the call to ministry. And we have demystified it. All right, so that all of us are not pushing to go into full time. We are pushing to become productive full time. So whatever vocation God gives to you is from there you got to fulfill the call. The business is not the call. The business is vocation. For most people, they make the business their call and mess up their lives. My call is to make money. There is no scripture in the Bible that tells you the call is to make money. Because he says, don't be over-concerned about making money because there comes with it many pangs. It's a woe to the rich who desire the pursuit. For the pursuit of wealth, they compromise everything. There is no such call to run to make money. But if you're in business, you have to make money. That is your business. You have no business to be in business if your business is not to make money. Simply means get out. Well, I, I, I'm, just in, I'm just here to make ends meet. No, no, that's ridiculous. You will meet your end soon. You just got to think seriously. All right? You got to think seriously that, that God put us in this vocation. It is from here we not only meet our needs and hone our skills and gather our resources, it's from here we start our journey to fulfilling the call. So my, my call is different. All right? As God has called me into the, in, into, into the, in, into, into the ministry, because I chose that, I have the 10 dimensions of the call, and this is my vocation. So from here, I got to start my journey to fulfilling my call. But in the journey, I collect 200 as I go. I collect my resources. I collect, I hone my skills. I gather all that is needed for my needs. But this is not the end. All the gathering of money is not the end. That's why people, it's a woe to the rich who pride in their rich, richness or their riches. 
Some people just think, well, I got the money. So what? What is a big deal? Money doesn't make you. Money is just in your pocket. It comes and it goes. Today is green, tomorrow is red. There's different colors of paper. It does not say anything about your spiritual stature. You have a lot of money to throw around. So does the fools in Las Vegas. They also have money to throw around. It doesn't make anything. It is just there to lubricate so that we are not scraping through in life. It's when people use money and try to force their way in here and there and try to push themselves. It's because they think their money talks. Definitely the money lets them out. But if you remove a man and his money away, he still get a man. And that's when you realize you made a millionaire. You can remove all his money, he can still make another million because it's inside him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why it's from our vocation. We got to, from our vocation, we begin our journey towards our call. In our vocation, what do we get? To meet all our needs. We, gather res we, we meet all our needs, we gather our resources, and we have everything that is in our skills become sharper and sharper. So you must know God has put you there. Some of us try so many things, but we have never come into what God intended us as our vocation. So we try our hands on this, we try our hands on this, we try our hands on this, until one day we find something that is a, gives us the ability to meet our needs, hone our skills, gather resources, that starts our journey towards our destiny. That is your primary field of operation. Well, I tried this for six months, and I tried that. It, everything didn't work. Why it doesn't work? Because it's no part of you, and it's not part of, of your life. You're not part of it. Then they tried their hands on this, and then it's, something started to move. That's when you know you have hit oil. Are you with me? It is easy. You don't struggle. It is you, and the job is you, and, and you are the job. You live it. You swim. You never see fish going to swimming school. <laughs> All the fishes are getting goggles and everything. Oh. <laughs> because the moment you enter in, you're just like fish in water. You just know. Hallelujah. You have found your place. Some of us are good in the talking area. We got to find that kind of vocation. Because that's, that's, that, that is us. Some of us are hands-on. All right? Some of us have skills. Some of us have certain abilities. Some of us with computer technology. Some of us with art. Some of us, you know, creativity. Some of us are, have different. So whatever your vocation, the moment you find it and you know it's God and, and God placed you there, from then begin the journey towards destiny. One of the most amazing things is this. If you can know that God has set you there in that place, you click. If you click, you're just going to see resources coming for you, one after the other. Number two, know the power of His presence daily. The operational principles in your vocation, know the power of His presence daily. The Bible tells us that God came into, in the cool of the garden or the, in the evening. He came in the cool of the garden every day and walked with men. The unhindered fellowship in the garden is what is needed. In the, in, in the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 8 to 11. Genesis chapter 3 verse 8 to 11. They heard the sound of the Lord walking in the, in the cool, walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees. Then the Lord God called to man and said to him, Where are you? I heard, he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, and I was, that I was, because I was naked, I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I have commanded you not to eat? Unhindered fellowship. 
All right, this was a time of impartation of God life. This was a time when God was speaking his word to the men. He gave everything man needed in his life through his word and through his promises and by putting the provisions around about him. Are you listening? Because God was coming continually into the garden, the river was flowing. Because God was coming continually into the garden, the mist of the, of the air was watering the earth. Because God was continually entering into where the man was. Everything worked like clockwork. If you want to be successful in your vocation, there must be an unhindered fellowship of God's presence with you continually in your job. Most people in their pursuit for money, they sell the presence. They're only looking for presents. They're looking for present, P-R-E-S-E-N-T-S. They're only looking for gifts. They lost the presence of God. They're looking for money. They're looking for promises, for deals. All kinds of stuff begin to come. That's why a lot of people along the way, everything becomes hard. Because when the presence of God leaves the garden, then you have to toil. Let's look at this. In chapter 3, 17. Or 17. Because you have listened to the voice of your wife. Please, don't use this against your wife. <laughs> Let me explain it to you and set the woman free again. And if eaten from the tree about which I commanded you, you shall not eat from it. Curses, curses the ground because of you. In toil you will eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall grow for you. And you will eat the plants of the field by the sweat of your face you will eat bread till you return to the ground because from it you were taken and from your from the dust and to the dust you shall return the only reason why god said a rebuke man for listening to the voice of his wife because she had listened to the voice of the serpent if not listen to your wife i remember one of my church members came to me one day and said you always listen to your wife i said to him should i listen to yours that was the end of the story. Counseling session was over. Most people, you know, don't realize how much wisdom there is in somebody who is closely connected to you. Your wife is your greatest protection. All right? If she is listening to God and listening to, to the voice of the Holy Spirit, she is your protection. If, but she is listening to the neighbor next door called the devil, you're going to have serious problem because she is going to transfer death through her voice into you. And that was what God rebuked Adam. You have no ability to discern. She was deceived, but you took the voice of deception and contaminated your pathway. All right. And that's why the presence of God has to come continually. We see here, the moment the presence of God lives, what happened is this. You will have to toil on the ground in order to produce. You have to work hard against it. It will fight it, fight with you to produce fruits. And even if you do, you're doing it by sweat. You have to work and work and labor and kill yourself until you go to the dust. That simply means this, where the presence of God is not there, you will work yourself to death. I hope you're still breathing. Okay, so you haven't died yet. That's good. Now the Bible tells us this, if you keep working in a place where the presence of God is not there, you're going to labor and labor. Instead of producing the right results, it'll be wrong results. Then you will have to push it again until you get the right results. And by the time you get the bread you want and you eat it, but you still will die. Because the stress, the struggles is going to kill you. Where the presence of God leaves, everything will work against you. It will work against your health and there is too much stress to produce the same amount of money. Amen? Let's develop a stress-free zone. Let's develop a stress-free life. Let's make money without sweat. Is that possible? Yes. yes, we can work our way to there. For most of us, we have to run here, run there, run crazy like a chicken without head in order to hope to see that there's something that's going to... So we work from 9 to 5 and sometimes from 5 to 12 and, and, and we are pushing and pushing just for a, a fistful of dollars. But we must go beyond this because that is the pathway of death. Are you with me? 
that is a pathway of death. Jesus came to give us life and life abundantly. Amen. What is the use of having all the money without life? Most people are miserable. They are tired. They are exhausted. Their body is collapsing. Their physical body is completely out. But they are getting money. So what? You have sold your soul for some dollars. That money is not going to pay for your health. That money is not going to pay for your sleep. You know, people said, well, you know, the man said, oh, I'm making lots of money. I thought I saw you at the hospital. Yeah, you know, pressure. What is the use of making all that, put all the pressure upon yourself? That's what happens when you have vocation where the presence of God is not there. In whatever you do, God must be involved. The presence of God must be there. Number three, know the power of his government over your life. Know the power of God's government over your life. Because you're going to the marketplace which is filled with lawlessness. Know the power of his government over your life. Because you're going to the marketplace which is filled with lawlessness. Is that true? If you are not governed, you will walk into chaos and become part of the mess. You will compromise. You begin to yield to it because there is no God's government on your life. Anything will go. It's okay. You will bend the rules here. Then you bend the rules there. It's, it takes a little at a time. And before long, you are as crooked as the dollar. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what happens to most people. They get in there, they, they become sucked into the environment. No, a little compromise here, a little compromise there. You know, and before long, you, you're, not, you, you, you're not looking after your home. You're not looking after your children. You, you, you're not looking after, you know, your, 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 your primary assignment that God has given to you. Bible study is no. Reading the Bible is, is not important to anymore. You read, you know, now you're reading in the bus stop. You have no quiet time. You're not reading the Bible in the plane. You don't have quiet time. You're reading the Bible in between travels. You call it busy. But busyness is not, is not the life God has for you. You can make yourself busy. So now you have no time. You've got to eat along the way. You can't enjoy your meal. You call, you know, just eat and run. Eat and run. Or you're thinking, oh, I'm really working hard. Yes, you're not doing what you, what you should do. Do you know if you're eating and running, it does not digest accurately? This is consultation without charge, extra charge. That's why when you're exercising, they don't allow you to eat food. You can drink water, but that is just to quench your thirst. All right? You're not supposed to eat while you are running on the treadmill. Put burger and, no no you're not supposed to do that's why you're not supposed to eat meal on wheels are we hearing but we call it a fast life in the fast lane no you are going fast that's true somewhere along the line most of us don't understand this is a stress life that we are taking upon ourselves we must have God's government upon our life because we are walking into chaos you're meeting people with the spirit of lawlessness. You're doing business with an environment that there is no law. Law can be changed, law can be bent. But you must not be. Anything anybody will do for a piece of bread, that's what Proverbs says. People do anything for a piece of bread. They're prepared to bend any law for any kind of thing. It does not matter. Laws can be changed. You just got to know how to lubricate the system. And when you have situations like that, you got to have government of God on your life. Because if you go in, you'll be part of the chaos. And the same judgment that falls in the world will fall on you. And that's why a lot of people don't know how to function effectively. Making money is not difficult. Who told you it's difficult? There are good ways, easy ways, bad ways, simple ways, crooked ways. Money can be made. Even non-Christians are making money. Don't talk anything further than that. There are lots of non-Christians who are making money. Crooks are making money too. 
Bad people are also making money. So there's nothing to boast. But to make money with God's government upon your life, that is a different story altogether. Amen? That's why you, you've got to have this operation principle upon your life. God's government must be upon me and it must govern me, protect me, shield me from the kind of attacks that are taking place. Where there is lawlessness, there is chaos. When there's chaos, there's disease. And wherever there's disease, there's going to be all kinds of things that's going to hit you from the outside and to come internally. That's why thousands can fall to your, th to your right and to your left. They cannot come near you because you're governed and protected by what God has given to you. Amen? And that boundary, that hedge around your life is God's government. That hedge around your life is God's government. So you, if you stay in obedience, then the things of God will be there on your life. God's presence and His love and His protection will be there. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Write down number four. You must work out the process so that the provisions will be available to meet your needs. You must work out the process for the provisions to be available to meet your needs. The vocation is important because you've got to develop the process. Let's say, for example, you're in computer business. you just got to make sure that you have enough knowledge how to build the computer. Secondly, you've got to develop it, how to build it faster and cheaper. Are you with me? Then you've got to think about how to multiply this speed and this quantity as fast as you can. Then you've got to think about how to get all that you have built to the customer and move it fast. Then you've got to think of, of, of the ability of how to collect the resources so that you don't just dump it in their lap and wait for them to pay in when kingdom comes. All that is called process. Most people think about money without thinking through the process. But the, one of the major things about this principle of operation is this you've got to think about the process because if the process is not complete provisions are not available if provisions are not available your needs are not met so even though you have a job your needs are not met so many people are in business but their needs are not met because their needs are not met what is their point of reference they go to the bank to take loan So because your needs are not met, you need cash. You need money. So go to the bank, take money, and the moment they take money, they become the, the, the borrower becomes the slave of the lender. So not only is the work demanding from you, now the bank is demanding from you. So you stretch in two different angles. So you will have to move this and you have to move them away. So all this struggle begins to increase basically because we have not were learned to find the process, to find the provision that will allow us to meet the needs. Let's say, for example, you have bakery. You're running a bakery. You must think of how to get the flour or the flour, you call it. You've got to think of how to get all the raw materials to make the thing. But before that, you've got to have resources to get all the machinery, heavy machineries into the place so that you, at least you have a place of operation. Now, all these things are part of the process. You can't be thinking that we've got to make the best cakes and distribute it for all the weddings. That's just an idea. That is an ideal idea to put good cakes on wedding tables yeah. hallelujah but it is just like a vision which has no feet yeah. Yeah. most of us can think the end yeah. and by the way if you would excuse me men think like that <laughs> men see the end men see the end men like to read the last chapter before they buy the book yeah. 
women they like to keep the suspense keep it going because they just don't want to read the end they want to find out the end and, and they like to follow through the story men read the last chapter ah i know how it ends you say you're killing the excitement of life but for men they want to see the cake distributed that's why you talk to people who have no business sense they tell you what will happen they don't tell you what they're going to do now because they don't think process or we're going to sell 20 houses and we're going to you know have everybody and we, people are going to come in and you know we're going to have our computers and everybody is going to buy our computer when they buy our computer they're going to turn on the and our the, the our screen saver is going to talk about our company and we're going to give them free no you haven't even built the computer most of us die in our dreams because we never wake up We got to think the process because the pro at the end of the process is the provision the provision will allow us to meet the needs if you're a pastor you want to change the world great wonderful that's a great idea so many people with ideas have died how many want to know how your dreams will come to pass <laughs> i tell you wake up that is the first steps where all your dreams are going to come to pass if you wake up from your sleep and start the process the journey of a thousand miles begins with the first time get something going it's easy for us to think you know we can sell this product you know to this nation and we can turn it around and we can make millions of dollars I heard that before but those people who talk like that never meet because they know to make a million is not as easy as talk Talk is only four letters. T A L K. Million is more than that. <laughs> That's the reason why you and I must remember we must discover the process. Sometimes the best thing to do is to think through the process and find out if you have a character to outwork the process. Because you don't think, that's why you think, wow, we're going, to have a, we're going to have a restaurant business and we're going to have the best dishes. My mother-in-law and my grandmother are prepared to give us the recipe. They will come and teach our cooks. And you haven't even talked to your grandmother if whether she remembers <laughs> the recipe. And you start a whole restaurant on the, the strength of your grandmother's memory, it is going to be disaster. She said, which dish? I can't remember. And then if she asks you, who are you? Then you have... <laughs> Welcome to reality. You must think, if you don't think the process, you don't know what is required. And you don't know if you have the character to pull through the channels of the process. That's why you don't realize, oh, to start a restaurant, we're going to have a restaurant. You, you, you got to go and work with the people who own the restaurant to think and ask yourself whether you have character to stay in a business like this. I think if you and I would go and sit down in a restaurant and see how these people work, if you become invisible, follow the cook and follow the people and see how they work. You say, do you want to work like that? If the answer is no, don't start it. Whatever business you want to do, go work for people who are doing it. At least go for one day, see them, and see whether you like it. If you don't like it, if you, if you, if you raise a business, you will probably kill it yourself before it kills you. I know so many people who have idea to start a restaurant because they saw one flourishing. And the guy was pressing in the cash register, ting, 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 and the guy was counting. And, and you look at that, and wow, so much money. And we're thinking like, wow, it's just ting, 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 ting. Oh, it's not ting, ting, ting. Your ears will ring, 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 because you have so many bills to pay. You don't realize, oh, I thought, but, but they are doing well. Yes, because they have a liking. They know that that's the place they ought to be in. That's why it clicks, it flows. Because it is part of the machinery. They are part of the missing link in their business. And the moment they got the business, they just flowed. But for you, it's different. It's uphill task all the way. 
Please do remember, we need to think through the process. If we think through the process, you can work out everything that is needed. If you cannot think through the process from A to Z, the chances are somewhere along the line, you will be stuck in the business when you start it. Because, oh, I didn't anticipate. It's basically on people who did not think things through. If you anticipate, you have already shot the problem before it raises its neck. Are we hearing? So you're never caught with your pants down. All right? You're never caught in any situation unaware. God, by His grace, must give to us the ability to think through process. Sit down and write everything down on paper. After this, after this, after this, after this, after this. You may be thinking, I want to start a fish business because I like fish. Please, fish may not like you. <laughs> because by the time you buy from the suppliers in China and they bring it across, anything could happen to the fish. Because a fish is crossing boundaries, it could change identity. <laughs> it's no longer Chinese anymore. All right. It'd be different because a fish, what kind of oxygen, how much content of oxygen, what kind of shipment, what kind of rough handling, who, where is it passing through, what are the ports it's passing through. You've got to think through the process because by the time the fish comes, you get, it's only good for burial. But you see, we see things that are flourishing. We don't think through the process. Where are you going to get the resources? After the first shipment, do you have to fly back all over again in order to go and check and put the fish on the container before you fly out? Or is there people who are good at it, who can ensure their quality, ensure before it's loaded that everything is well, and ensure that everything that is coming on arrival is healthy? Does this kind of fish have diseases? Can they spread to the other tanks? Can we mix the fishes together? You've got to know all this kind of stuff. You can't just say, I like fish. So does the cat say it. All right? So you just got to think seriously. You've got to think through the process. If you can think through the process, then you can understand whether you have the character, whether you have the knowledge to help the process right to the end. Can you say amen to that? Why don't you write this down, number five? The fifth operational principle is know the power of a healthy marriage. One of the casualties of, of people becoming rich is that they lose their family. And you know the scripture, my favorite scripture in the book of Genesis 26 is this, that he had a great household and the Philistines envied him. I think I'm going to take a little bit of time on this one. Write this down. Number one, you need a suitable helpmate. You need a suitable helpmate or help meet or meet in help or meet with help. All right, you need suitable one, not the wrong one. The disaster is to have a wrong one. All right, because you will inspire each other to multiply the strength of 10,000. Now, you can use this principle even for partnership. If you get, an, you get an unsuitable partner, you have problems. All right, if you bring along somebody who is not going to be helping you, who is just a sleeping partner, he's only going to get money and you are going to do all the work. But he's not putting in enough in, this, in, in whatever partnership. There must be a suitable helpmate. Amen? That's why you find this Ahab produced Jezebel. It was the weak leadership of Ahab that forced Jezebel to rise up to wear the pants. Not only wear the pants, but she handled the sword. Ahab went and found out that Naboth would not want to give him the the vineyard so what did he do he went back home and he cried she said stop crying and he became she became his mother 
He said, you stay here, let me get a toy for you. So she went and gathered and she said, this is what I will do. I'll gather the city elders together, get some wicked men and begin to conspire against him. Let's kill him and then you go and take the vineyard. See, she planned the device. If Ahab knew exactly how to get his own vineyard, she doesn't have to do the dirty work. That's why if you have wrong partnership, you will inspire one another for evil. To outsmart the evil of your partner, you become eviler or more evil. Are you with me? To become, to, to fight the evil intentions of a partner, you will have to be more evil than them in order to outsmart them. It takes a thief to deal with another one. You have to become crooked in your thinking. So the person is trying to do this and you will have to try to bend your way in order to catch them at their own game. So you have to play the game of a wicked man and thereby trap yourself in wickedness. A suitable helpmate is what we need. All right. In everything that I do, mom is involved. Everything that I want to buy, mom is involved. Everything that I want to build, mom is involved. Every person I want to talk to, mom is involved. Because I don't want to operate in a strength of a thousand. Bible says one, a thousand, two, ten thousand. The strength of ten thousand is what we need. We need to have our women stand alongside with us. Even though they don't do business hand in hand with us, but yet they can see things we cannot see. By laboring together, it gives us strength. Amen. In everything that I'm involved, mom is involved. I do not father any person except through both of us because when you come and deal with the opposite sex you cannot try to i can't be a father to a a girl or a lady who does not want to receive her as a mother then there is going to be con disconnection somewhere and that disconnection could be destruction that's why a suitable help me is so important writer number two all right knowing the power of a healthy marriage the suitable helpmate have to be from the same with the same dna the suitable helpmate had to be from the same dna that's why the bible tells us that god took out of his ribs and made woman from the same blood type this is bone of my bones flesh of my flesh number three the helpmate must be one who came from your heart, came from what is within. The helpmate must be one who came from within him so that she can complete him and compliment him and comfort him and cooperate with him and contribute to him. And all the women are becoming ticklish. All right, let me just repeat. She came from within him so that she can complete, complete him, compliment him, comfort him, cooperate with him, and contribute to his success. Complete, compliment, comfort, cooperate, and contribute. The partner that you have must be one who is coming from within. That means somebody who is actually really hard of heart or who you really are. When you strike partnership with somebody who is not of your heart, you're going to have problems because they will not compliment, they will compete. They'll begin to struggle together with you from day one. That's why a healthy marriage is important. A healthy partnership is very, very important. Can you say amen to that? Amen. All right, write down number four. Partnership must develop into another level of relationship. Into a higher level of relationship. The partnership must develop into a higher level of relationship. You've got to take the relationship to the next level. Read in Genesis chapter 2. Verse 24, Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. 
It says to us this, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and they were not ashamed. Father and mother are important relationships. They lay the foundation for character. They lay the foundation for wholeness of life. They lay the foundation for wholesome relationship. But once the, the man has discovered these dimensions of life, he needs to find where he can start the relationship. So he gets married to a wife and he cleaves to her. So one level of relationship to the next level of relationship. So every partnership must grow in levels of relationship. But most partnerships don't grow in levels of relationship. They only grow in levels of competition and struggle. They are fighting for the results. They're not fighting for the relationship. That's why it dies. Partnership becomes sour. Relationships become broken. Are we hearing? Whether it's Christian partnership or not, all partnership must grow in the next level of relationship. Amen? If you want to go up higher, you need to develop a higher level of relationship. Father and mother will not allow you to have any fruit. They can allow you to become the wholesome life. But if you're going to produce the next generation, you have to have your own wife. Are we hearing? You have to have your own wife. And out of that relationship, which is higher than the father and mother, you're going into a level of relationship higher and you're going to produce things. Are we hearing? So all partnerships or all marriage relationships must develop their level of relationship to the next level. You see, you as a man can't do more and more. If my relationship with mom does not grow, what I'm attempting is going to be dangerous. Because as I get older and older, as I get more and more blessed with what God has given to me, my reach and things that I want to do is bigger and bigger and bigger. For a bigger work, you need a bigger base of relationship. Don't attempt big things in your partnership when the base of your relationship with your partner is small. For example, an elephant with the feet of a giraffe. You're going to have problems. All right? So you're trying to build bigger and bigger things, but the level of relationship is a very narrow level of relationships. It's going to topple. Are you listening? That's why we need to have this. That's why the level of relationship within your, as husband and wife. See, so many business people, they operate their businesses without having their wives involved. Because they say, my wife doesn't know anything. I'll, I know every wife knows one thing. They want, they don't want to be a widow. Number two, they don't want to lose the husband. Number three, they don't want to lose the family. They're, that Everything that a man is doing is not as important as losing everything. If there's anybody who can protect everything that you do is your partner is your wife because no wife wants to see anything messed up at home the man can be a hero out there but they don't want to have a hell at home for a man he said here's the money buy yourself anything you want she's not interested in that your money cannot get her because she is living at home she wants a home to be healthy Money is not important. For a man, buy a house with 17 rooms and give it to your wife. You see it as a great gift. You see it as a gift of romance. But she looks at it and she sees a coffin. Why? Because 17 rooms, she's thinking who's going to clean it. Who's going to clean it? For you, it's a Taj Mahal. Please remember, Taj Mahal is a tomb. For a man, build the biggest and the greatest and give it to her. The pride of a man's ego is crushed. When she said, it looks like a tombstone. Because who is going to clean the house? 17 rooms, by the time you clean one and you go back next week to clean the other one, all the dust and the spiders have made hell in that room. Are we hearing? That's why you need to, the, the higher you want to go, you must begin to build a wider base of relationship. 
Most men want to attempt big. Most partners want to attempt big, but they have never grown their relationship level. It cracks. All right, don't try to attempt everything with the same partner. And all God's people said, if the level of relationship doesn't grow, the attempt will be destruction. That's why I tell the people, I said, hey, grow the level of relationship. Don't grow from one business to another, to another, to another with the same partner. Why? Because your level of relationship is already constrained. If they don't grow in trust, when you handle bigger money, you have bigger problems. Now you handle 100,000, now you're quarreling. 100,000, you're quarreling. And, and where is this money? Where is that money? Where is this money? And you start to have mistrust. If you have one million, ten times more trouble. Don't attempt greater things until you have built wider bases. So that as you go up, you don't collapse. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Talk to me, are you hearing me? Yeah. Write down number five. This is on the power of marriage. This is called the power of innocence. And let me explain this to you. Give people the benefit of doubt. Give people the benefit of doubt and live beyond mistrust. Live beyond mistrust by trusting each other, you become stronger. By trusting each other, you become stronger. When mom and I have a problem, we try to kill the problem together. We don't try to use the problem to kill each other, which is what most people do. When you have a problem, both must help to solve it. It is easy for two of us to attack it, then one of us try to solve it. There's an enemy in the midst, a problem is a need in the midst. A problem is an indication of something that has gone wrong. So two persons must handle together the same problem. Doesn't matter who created it, two must handle it together. Are you breathing? Yes. The problem with having problem in our marriage is that one takes responsibility, the other takes irresponsibility. No, the responsibility is two of you. Both of you have produced the kid. It has the responsibility of both the parents to deal with the child, not just one. In the same way, if a problem happens in the partnership, both partners must deal with it. Because to, to deal with the problem together from two different angles is faster than leaving it to one person to solve it. Are we hearing? Yes. Talk to me, are you hearing? Yes. If the problem happens between mom and I, I don't use the problem to attack her. She doesn't use the problem to attack me, even though I could be the reason why the problem happened. It is a problem. It's in between us. It's our enemy. And so we get rid of the enemy and then we talk. Are we hearing? There are three of the brothers all together. If I punch one, all three of them have to gather to gang up to beat me up. Why? Because they are in covenant. In covenant, we stand together first. We hit the ones out of, outside of covenant, and then, after I'm beaten, I'm bleeding, and I'm running away, the two of them look at him and say, Stop getting yourself into trouble from now on, or else we have to bail you out all the time. <laughs> and give him a good tight one, and let him go. But as far as the enemy is concerned, all three are together. This is how we solve the problem. By staying with those in covenant together. Collectively, we deal with the problem outside. And the moment the guy is gone, we deal with the one who actually was involved with the problem. That's a, the man said to me, you always stand with your wife. Yes, because I have to live with her. If any side I'm going to take, I'm going to take the side of covenant. Whether it's right or wrong, I take covenant first. Because there's an enemy coming in to destroy the covenant. We deal with that issue first together.
we lock hands deal with the problem and then we say don't do this again that's a private affair I'm not talking about sin please I'm talking about dealing with problems that come in from the outside is that clear Talk to me, is it clear? This is called the power of innocence. They both were naked before each other, but they never used that vulnerability against one another. That's the power of innocence. To be able to look at a problem in an objective way. Can somebody say amen to that? It doesn't matter who created the problem. Problem is not important. Solve it first. That's important. Who is right? Or who is the one who created? Who is right? Who is wrong? It's immaterial. Who is right? Who is wrong? Both of you are wrong, that's why it happened. And after, after you deal with the problem, shoot it, get rid of, make sure the next time it will never happen again. That's how you solve problems. Problems are never solved if one person is targeted with a problem and penalized and become a victim. That person is holding the cart. Ha uh ha, -huh. you made me feel like a victim. Okay, I say sorry your turn will come because you sleep somewhere vengeance is mine saith me so you've been embarrassed by your wife you wait for your chance because she will sleep someday huh you are also the same why do they say that because they remember the last time you pinned them against the wall now they pin you they don't pin you they hook you on the wall that's not what it's going to be like. Are we hearing this? I trust that you're beginning to see that why marriage and partnership is so important. If we have good partners, if we have good marriage, it is going to be protection for us in a vocation. Can you say amen to that? Write down number five. Sorry, number six. The woman was involved in helping him personally. Not just his job. The woman was involved in helping him personally, not his job, not just his job. Can I share this with you in the sense, if you have really, really good marriage, this is how it works. If I force mom to do everything I'm doing, she's going to be stressed because not, that's not what she likes to do. But her job would be to inspire me to move on forward so that I do my job well. Whatever she can do, she will help me. But whatever she does not want to do, she can inspire me to do it. In good partnership, this is how it operates. It's not always one partner is good in everything. But we can inspire the partner to do the job and get the job done. Because some of them are good in certain things. Our inspiration is to help them do that part. And whatever part they cannot do is part that we as the stronger partner must be able to carry. Or else, partnership collapse. Marriage is the same way. There are certain things I can do and I don't, but I don't like to do. But there are certain things that she likes to do. And the areas that where I'm good at, she inspires me so that I can finish the task. It multiplies strength because she was raised for him. The Bible didn't say that she was raised to till in the garden. She was raised to be the helpmate of the man who is doing the job. The man is the one who is a runner. The woman is the one who is the inspirer. Are you listening? I'm talking about normal marriage. Not yours, but mine. I'm talking about what is normal. All right, according to context, but because society has moved out of context for so many, we have to live in survival mode. So different structures of families have been organized. But I'm going back to the Garden of Eden. But because society is fragmented, there's, you know, now you have babysitters that you don't have to look after babies. You don't have to look after your own children, you just produce them. Your mother-in-law will look after her. All right, you have babysitters and you have so many situations that can help. But this is different situation, you know. You're going back to the original pattern is different, all right. And so in the original pattern, the man is the one who has the job. The woman is the inspirer who moves him forward. And whatever he could not pick up, she picked up. 
Ruth began to work in the scene. Wherever the men did not gather, she gathered whatever was not gathered. That's why to give woman the main task is wrong. To give the woman the main task is wrong. Unless she can raise up people alongside with her. If you look at the shoulders of a man and the shoulders of a woman are two different types of shoulders. One is square because they carry heavier load. Man is supposed to carry a heavier load. Women are not supposed to carry the heavy load. If ever women are in the front and they will have to lead, then we've got to raise up others who will share the load so that they keep their role simple. That is the way how churches should function, how leadership should function. If it's a woman is in the front, her role should be very simple role. All other things are diversified. Everything is done by others. But her role is simple, not complicated. Men are different. Men can handle so many pressure at the same time. That's why they are sent to war. Most of them don't want to go to war, but they are sent to war. Uh, tr train them. They are not warriors, they are warriors. So you can't send warriors to war, but they must be tough. That's why whenever you have women going out into the open field and become executives and push everything around, you don't see them normal. Because they have to play the role of man and they have to be tough. They have to find place and shovel place for where it's only man's world. So they become tougher and they become stronger and they are bossy. I'm not saying that is right or wrong. I'm just saying facts. So don't say, well, how can you say that? No, I'm not saying that. It is saying itself. All right? These are facts of society because it is, it is that kind of world. If that world is all male executives, then you are the female rising, the people won't give you space. So if she is going to come up all the way where men are, she has to be a tough cookie. And for her to be tough, she will have to live tough, act tough, not just try to be tough at a certain time. She will have to be tough at all the time because we never know when men are going to attack her. It's a man's world. So she evolves. Because of the pressure. Are you listening? That's the reason why I, I, I said to, I, I, inside the churches, I said, let the ladies rise as ladies. Don't put unnecessary heavy burden. Let the men become straight, become pillars everywhere. Let the ladies grow in between. It's important. All right? It's important. Some situations is not, not, not conducive. So what we do, we structure the, the leadership of the woman because um, a lot of our churches are run by female pastors so we, we got to make sure that the female are strong in simple roles. All other things are given and provided by others. It becomes easy. Easy to breathe. Are you listening? It's easy. That's why they must rise up strong people in the house. And you find that every one of them blossoming, it becomes easy. You know a matriarch can just walk in the place. Everything is done. It's how powerful. That's how Chinese families ran for years. All right. They just, just, had, just had a matriarch. The matriarch was the, the head of the house. Whether, I'm not talking about whether it's right and biblical. I'm just talking about how to work in a contextual point. That's all. But when situations of emergency happens this way, we must learn how to work it through. All right. Because we never know what will happen. But in a situation that happens, this is how you make adjustments so that even in that environment, we are still winners. We're not losers. No matter what the devil does, no matter what the enemy tried to create, we know how to turn the situations around, working out the process together with God, and all things can be well. Can you say amen to that? Simple instructions for your vocation. All right, time's running out, but this is important. Can you understand this so far? I said, can you understand this so far? We thank God for this, for the message again.
you know, as, uh, as we begin. And uh, the topic was operational dynamics. I thought it was something to do with uh, the, uh, the natural flow of uh, finding a vocation. But the first few, but the first few uh, points was about making sure, you know, the unhindered presence of God. And uh, it made so much sense there because wherever there's God, there's life. Many times when we enter into a vocation, we leave God behind because we use our own um, intelligence. We use our own. We are dependent on our own selves. And so many, so many of these points are so vital for us. And I believe that uh, the second part was about our marriages, you know, because the Bible talks about when two or three agree, when two or three on the earth, you shall ask anything you want and it shall be done. The agreement between the husband and the wife was also to me the second major, major part of the, uh, the operational dynamics in our, in our vocation. The first part was God, that God is the center, you know, like number one was actually finding your, uh, you know that this is your calling, this is your vocation. Number two was the presence of God. And then the second part was about our marriages, about our families, and I believe, I believe many times without us realizing husband carries, uh, you know, hurts um, and wives carry hurts in their, in their heart and offenses and we don't get rid of it. And because we don't get rid of it, I believe that there is no flow. There is no proper flow because of the offenses that are there. And I believe that as I see the big picture and the tapestry of what God is trying to say through Papa's Papa's message today is these two factors, the factor of our relationship with God and our relationship with the one that is closest to our life. And if these two factors are in place, our vocation will flow and we will find the four rivers that are in the garden. We will find, we will find in the book of Genesis chapter two, verse 10, the Bible says, and there were four rivers in the garden and those rivers was the one that took, took Adam and Eve to where there was gold and belly dim and all the precious stones. And I believe the river inside of us gets stuck because either our relationship with God is hindered or our relationship with one another is hindered. So I pray today that as God begin to speak to us clearly, as God begin to show us what needs to be done and what changes we need to make, I pray that our vocation will be under the open heaven will be under the principles of heaven not governed by money not governed by man not governed by anything else but by governed by by heavenly principles and in the heavenly principles it does not matter what happens on the earth because if it is there god will always always bless it you know it's genesis 26 again the bible says and isaac sowed in the land and god blessed the man May God bless us. It simply means that we expand bigger, become bigger, better, sharper than any environment that we face in our vocation because God is with us. God bless you. Thank you for being here as we continue to press in, as we continue to believe until 2023 is over. May God transform the man. When he transforms the man, he will transform the land. God bless you and have a good, good day. Blessings to your family and your church and everybody around you will be blessed because of you and have a wonderful, wonderful week ahead. God bless you and see you at the top.